Today I want to talk about one of my not so favorite topics in um, Office 365 or Microsoft 365 and that's the permissions in Teams. Um, I don't know if I am awake at night more about this or if other people just don't know so they don't worry but it's something that definitely concerns me quite a bit. So I want to remind you that as powerful as Teams are when a team gets created, it creates a SharePoint site collection in the background, so that's used for the storage. And um, it also creates a Microsoft 365 group. So this little group uh, manages your permissions. It automatically, everyone that you add in the team as a member or an owner becomes part of this Office 365 group. So think of it as a security group. And in a Microsoft team, everyone actually has the same permissions. So um, owners can add and remove members and can change settings. But when it comes to the documents, etc., everyone can add, edit and delete everything. Listen to that again. Everyone in a team can add and edit and delete everything. Okay, so um, in a team, typically, let's say you've got 20 or 30 people in a team, um, it doesn't mean that everyone works with all the content. So there might be some content um, that they should consume more uh, just as an FYI and um, they have access to it and read access to it, but they can still edit it and they can still delete it. So how do we manage this? Now, recently, I, uh, together with a friend at one of the companies that I work with, her name is Marilise, and we do a lot of crazy things together. We uh, kind of looked at a scenario where you can block the sharing of content out of Teams. Now, yes, this might sound as counterproductive, okay, but I don't believe that it is. I do think that there is scenarios where this is a good um, approach to actually take. So let's take a look typically at your team and, uh, and how those permissions work. So in this team that you see there, marketing and sales, if I go to manage team, you will see that I'm the owner and Brahm, my very, very loyal um, internship, is a member. So what happens is, is that Brahm can pretty much do what he wants because um, he has editing rights, not just contribution rights. He has editing rights, which means he can even delete apps and create apps. I just want to mention that he doesn't have contribution rights. If you're listening, Microsoft please can we change that to contribution rights. That would be a very, very good step in the right direction. And then owners can delete apps and create apps. But anyway, that's a begging story for another day. So here's Brom in the team and in the reporting channel. Um, he's uh, got a folder there called marketing reports and Brom decides to share this with someone else. So if I go to the sharing and um, I then decide that I also want to share this with Paul, and um, I'm going to give Paul editing rights. So this is now Brom doing it, right? He can then, of course, just send this to Paul and Paul then has um, access to edit those files. So that marketing reports is now available to Paul, the folder, even though Paul does not have access to um, the team. The challenge with this is if we were a lot of people in this team, that doesn't look like a folder that's been shared out to me. It's not like the color changes. Yes, I know you can manually do that. Um, or that it warns people that whatever is put in there now is also shared with an additional person. So if I had to go and load more content in there, unknowingly to me, Paul will also have access to it. So that is a bit of a challenge to me. So from a best practice perspective, what I tell people to do if they share out of their team is I would say marketing reports shared with Paul, for example, and I normally ask people to change the color of the folders so that when I go to this location, this is actually clear to me that whatever is in there has been shared with other people. So that's a best practice thing that you can teach people when they're in teams, share content with people outside of the team members and owners. Because for me, that's a business rule. This means that I know if I go to manage team, I know who the people are that can have access to the team and edit the team and stuff. But this now actually highlights an exception. Still, I'm not too happy about this. There's a second level that you can do, which I actually think works quite well. So as the team owner, um, I just want to uh, go to the team. So I'm the owner of this team. I'm going to go to general. I'm going to go to files, open in SharePoint. So there we go. And we open up the SharePoint site behind this. And on this SharePoint site, 
I'm going to navigate to the permissions. So there you can see site permissions. So settings wheel, site permissions. And um, if I go to advanced permissions, I can then go to the access request settings. And this is where I stop people being able to share the site. So allow members to share the site in individual files and folders. Allow members to invite others to the site members group. Okay, so I normally take that off. Okay, so I'll take that off. This is also where you can manage the um, access requests. So who should it be? Is it uh, the owners that automatically? So that's the people that will get um, the request. So now you'll see that if Brahm now goes to share this, he actually doesn't have the ability anymore to give editing rights. Um, he can only give viewing rights. And also very important what it says there is you can still add people and send an invite request to the file owner. Now automatically the team's owner is seen as a file owner. Okay, so I'm going to just um, set that up and say Paul. And uh, I'll just put a note in there and say ignore this Paul. It's just for a demo, okay, <laughs> just in case Paul tries to actually access that and do something with it. So he's now um, done that request and what will happen is, is that the owner will actually receive um, the request to give the person permissions. So there you can see, here's the email that uh, I as the owner have now received and I can then say whether I want to accept or um, decline this specific request. I'll say accept. Um, Paul will receive view access to marketing reports shared with him. I'm going to approve this. And he now has viewing access to the specific item. Now as the owner when I get this request I can also change the setting for that person. So make sure that you actually ask um, the owner to change it because it automatically gives viewing rights. So if I look at this, I can actually change this and say the permission would be um, contribute, please not edit. And we can send that. So this is how it can go through an approval. And this is definitely very valuable when it comes to specific teams where the content should be very secure, if that makes sense. So that definitely helps to then um, make sure that people don't share items out um, without making sure that the owner is of the content. Um, I'm not saying that this will work for all the instances, but for some business scenarios, let's say an HR team, I'd say this is a very good idea. So it automatically gives viewing rights. It does request the owner to approve this. And the owner then has the ability to also change that access to editing rights if need be.